I'm Jill O'Connell. This is One on Wednesdays. Thanks for joining me today. Today, I've got a great guest with me. She is a family law attorney from Albany, New York. Her name is Lauren Hunt. She is on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. You can find her website, laurenhuntesq.com. And that is probably the same uh, handle she's got on all social media. I know it definitely is on Instagram. And I have asked her to join me today to talk about some co-parenting tips for this upcoming season. Lauren, if you haven't seen her on Instagram, go find her. She's always got great tips on co-parenting and a lot of other areas in family law. Uh, she does collaborative law. She mediates. Anyway, I think she's great. And um, she is a great resource for tips and her insight into uh, what can go on in conflict with kids and divorce. So she's got a few tips for us today about co-parenting through this upcoming season. Thanks for joining me, Lauren. I'm so happy to chat with you today. Not a problem at all. Thank you so much for having me on. It's so nice to actually be able to connect uh, after, you know, following each other and engaging on, uh, on uh, all of our lovely social media platforms. Yeah, our paths crossed on so many, so many different places. <laughs> I agree. So great to actually chat with you in person. And, uh, and I was looking forward to it because, again, I think you have great insight. And as a family law practitioner, uh, we all um, endeavor to uh, advocate for our clients. But your insight is always really helpful for those co-parenting situations that I think um, so many of our clients and people find themselves in these upcoming times. Yeah. And, you know, co-parenting is, is just, it's an ongoing endeavor, right? It's not a one and done thing like a divorce, right? right? You distribute the property, you figure out support, you're done most of the time. Co-parenting is that ongoing process. And especially, you know, I, I'm a child of divorced parents. I know it from both as an attorney, the perspective of an attorney, but also the perspective of a child. Um, so I'm thrilled to be on today to talk about some co-parenting things for the upcoming holidays, which, you know, very different holiday season is coming upon us, right? Right, right. We talked about a couple of tips, you and I, just a few minutes ago. What is your, what is your first tip? What is your favorite one? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I think favorite is all relative, but especially for this upcoming holiday season, I think the most important one is to think before you enter the conversation with your co-parent, think about what it is, what points you want to convey, right? Um, You need to keep it focused, especially when it's a higher conflict relationship, Mm -hmm. you need to keep your communication focused to the exact points that you need to convey in order to achieve the result you want. So for example, if if your actual concern is, you know, I want to make sure that my children are safe while they're with their parent, my co-parent, um, you know, what your goal is, is understanding what's your co-parent's COVID precautions, right? Right. Um, so that's your goal. And then when you're writing your communication or engaging in your phone call, you know, everything just needs to be focused on that goal. And if your your communication is veering off into other areas, you just have to be able to note that to yourself and redirect yourself back to your goal. Mm-hmm. Um, so every, like, you know how they say all roads lead to Rome, Right. Right. <laughs> All communication has to lead you back to your goal. And so, you know, I think this kind of ties into my second point, the shorter the communication, the better. You don't need, when you're engaging in communication, what I see so frequently, and I'm sure what you see so often is these long email chains where each party is trying to rebut the statements or correct the statements or call the other person out. Yes that just creates tons of noise, yeah. right? You just got to cut through it as hard. I mean, geez, it, we're human. It's hard sometimes to want to yeah. like, <laughs> to yeah. want to restrain ourselves, but you have to, right? You have to boil your communications down to the who, what, where, when, why. Yeah. And so all communication just has to lead directly to your goal. So again, with this upcoming holiday season, if your goal is, I want to know what your plans are for COVID precautions, I want to know who our kids are going to be potentially exposed to, then that's your goal in your communication. And anything else about, you know, maybe I know you've been terrible at following COVID precautions, just take that out. Keep it focused on your goal. 
I agree. So many of those emotional issues, and and again, in this year with COVID, there are so we we all are a little bit um, on edge. We're tired of the requirements. We're tired of hearing about the precautions. So abortions are a little bit frayed, and we're just a little bit more exposed than we would in a normal season. So I I agree with those because removing that emotional layer can just help you keep that focus on your goal, which should be uh, in that question, your kids. And mm -hmm. that one that you're communicating with is your ex now, so you don't have to engage with them, maybe in the way that you might have in the past and just focus on what the question is or the, the who, what, where, when, why about your kids. Yeah, I think that's great. Think you know, uh, so many times I see parents who write these emails and they think, you know, yes, I stripped my communication down to just what I needed to. And then I review it. And I'm like, well, you could really take out a lot more. So my, you know, sort of, I guess my third tip is write your email or write your tech, whatever method of communication, um, write it, pause for a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe overnight, and then reread it. Is there anything else you can strip out? Um, because especially when you're going into the holiday season, I mean, it's a season of cheer, it's a season of goodwill, it's a season of thanks. You wanna try and do what you can to avoid <laughs> creating a huge dispute because that is gonna filter down to the kids. No matter how much you try to avoid it, trust me, <laughs> they do, you know? Um, so definitely, especially in this upcoming season, just take that extra effort to remove that additional layer if it's present. Yeah. Well, that, those are great, and I like how they all come under that umbrella of just removing that, that extra layer that might not be necessary during this time when you're focusing on the kids. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, and thank you, thank you. And um, there was one more that I wanted to share, and it was just, um, you know, so how I talked about all, the, uh, all communication should lead to your goal, right? Yeah. Um, when you're communicating, at least in the first instance, you know, let's say you're starting off that email of, hey, I want to talk about what precautions you're taking for the upcoming holiday. If you're in a bit more of a high conflict relationship, um, you might also want to think about, well, what do I have to be prepared for, for the response, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because sometimes that response can be hard to receive, right? Maybe it's angry, maybe it's um, all over the place, maybe it, there's no response. Mm -hmm. um, so I think sometimes preparing also mentally and emotionally for what you could receive back is helpful mm -hmm. so that if you do receive something back, it doesn't destroy your own inner peace or your enjoyment of the holiday. Um, yeah. And I think that's a really important piece, just again, going into the holiday season um, to find a way to preserve it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it ties back with your earlier uh, thought, which again, when you receive that email, if you receive an email back that has an emotional layer you might just do the same thing to that response that you might have done to your own right just sort of uh remove that part and don't don't think about it get, get yep. down to the facts and you know if it's a paragraph at the beginning or a sentence and a paragraph or sentence at the end that, that are emotional and not on point don't don't consider them don't give them a lot of thought what i've and i that's exactly it. what i've actually suggested to some clients in the past and a few of them have actually taken me up on it is print out the email, take a Sharpie, cross off everything that's not actually related to the communication and then that, you know, the communication yeah, yeah. that's leading to your goal yeah. and then reread the email and only respond to those points. Yeah. Very good point. I like it. I like mm -hmm. it. Cause then you don't have that temptation, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to, yeah, it absolutely removes all of that. Yeah, you're not going to get caught up in something you didn't want to get caught up with to begin with. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, Lauren, thanks for chatting with me today. I Gosh, really appreciate it. Um, this is One on Wednesday. I'm Jill O'Connell. Again, this is Lauren Hunt. She's got her firm in Albany, New York. And you can find her on social media at Lauren Hunt ESQ. So that's Lauren Hunt Esquire. And uh, her website is the same. Thanks for joining me.